Um, I arrived in Yangzhou in October 2018. I am a foreign teacher. So I felt kind of trapped like in Northwest Pennsylvania. Uh, I mean, I was born and raised in Crawford County, uh, very low population of people and very monocultural area. And like, I was familiar with Erie and Pittsburgh and like, that general area. I was I was fortunate to go to even go to college because there are so many different routes you can take, and I wasn't sure myself. And all, all I knew is that I was I was very interested in international culture and um, international relations. I got involved in politics, and environmental issues, so I wasn't really concerned to be honest. Like I I knew I didn't get homesick that easily, and I was really excited about seeing China. I fortunately had Chinese friends and I had um, a friend that wasn't Chinese that spent a month in China. So she told me a lot about it. She really sold it to me. Um, one of the biggest obstacles you will face coming to China is bureaucracy. Just bureaucracy in the US, bureaucracy with your college, and bureaucracy with China. Like They're all very good at it and they all love their paperwork. And you're just gonna have to be patient. Now they're completely unexpected and will probably never happen to anyone uh, that comes to Shane again is someone died on my plane coming here and so I had we were we were over the Canadian Arctic and a, an old man died of a heart attack uh, during dinner time and so we had to turn the plane around with all 315 people on the airplane and that made me a daily to my arrival time. My family was telling me over and over again not to do China. They're like, just, you've had so many issues, don't, don't go to China. I stood my ground, I was very stubborn, and was like, no, I'm going. I've committed, I've already said yes, I don't like to just, I don't like to commit to something and then back out of it. It's a memorable experience, and I, I, was, I was ready for it. So I learned, because previously I was very very, um, I'm a very dependent person. I, I do not like to stand out and I do not like to do things alone. And I realized that I'm gonna have to suck it up and tough it out because China's the place where you're gonna have to be a lot more independent and you're gonna stand out a lot. I've gotten uh, more confident walking around in China as a foreigner and I realized that it's okay, no one's gonna like make fun of you for being foreign or different. I think it was really cool to have the opportunity to not only just be abroad, because there's a difference being abroad temporarily, like with a, a field trip or um, a study abroad, and working and living and like literally being in, in the system abroad. And that was really interesting to me. I really like the idea of going as far away as possible. You <laughs> can't get further away than China, so I, I was like, when else am I going to go to China in my life? Like two years ago, I would have never foreseen myself going abroad this far. And I finally was getting settled in, it was fine. Um, then I got really sick, so don't um, get sick on top of being sick on top of being sick. Take medicine the first time you get sick here because both of my lymph nodes swelled up a lot. And I don't Google what that is because I thought I had lymphoma and I didn't. Uh, it was just. It was just immune system alterations. Uh, strange things can happen to you, and I just happened to be in China for it. Oh, every single problem I've had, uh, completely unexpected. But now I'm just less surprised by things now. I'm like, I think it's really prepared me to be able to take a hit and keep going. I'd say uh, about halfway through I started to get homesick, and then I realized that it's important for me to make my own decisions and not just go with other people. Um, and that really helped me to be more independent. I think now that I uh, have the confidence to exist as a foreigner in China, I'll have a lot more confidence at home.